How's it going guys? My name is Savaris and today is a very special day because I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of everything that I have going on in my garage and it is quite a lot. Now I haven't been around for the last few weeks, well very regularly, because I've been gearing up to do a lot of things in the next weeks and months. I'm gonna have a more regular upload schedule, I'm gonna have a lot of cars that you guys like, and I'm gonna have a lot of people on the channel that you guys like as well. Number one, well, as far as people that uh, you guys like, this guy. Hi. Hi, so you guys know him. He is Robert Dunn from Aging Wheels, and he drives an electric car, and he's better than you. So uh, that that is yeah, that is yeah. definitely true. And uh, Robert comes all the way from... Canada, no, Missouri. Missouri, yeah. yes, Missouri. And uh, which he calls Misery, which yes. is apt. Sometimes. Sometimes. It's cold there, it's not cold here. Yeah, so it's cold there, not cold here, and you brought some gifts. Yeah, just a few things. Just a few, just just a, just a little bit. What'd you bring? I brought uh, these workbenches over here. So you brought those workbenches. Let's uh, come come and come and do a little tour of the workbenches that you brought. So Robert made these workbenches. So Look this, at this. This is a rolly workbench. Uh, the brakes are on right now, but this is a conference table top that I got for my last job. It is some sort of three quarter inch wood wrapped in a steel veneer, and down here. Freddie, you can explain these. Yeah, so these used to be the doors on my dining room, uh, doors to my dining room from my den, and I gave them to Robert because I don't really like them, and they had these weird, like, peacock engravings on them, and I didn't really know what to do with them. So I gave it to him, and he said I could find a use for them, and then he brought them back and turned them into a table. This thing is amazing, but what's even more amazing is the fact that he built all of these workbenches, these BAWB bomb ass workbench to be precise. Now, um, these have a quarter inch steel top. Yes, one quarter inch steel top, two two by four panels per workbench. There are three workbenches, two by eight each. They're 36, 36 inches tall. I used two by sixes for the basically everything, and I used three quarter inch maple hardwood plywood. We also put a pegboard. I went to Home Depot and got this uh, awesome pegboard so I could put lots and lots of tools and stuff up here. And also, uh, subscribe to Aging Wheels. Definitely do that, link will be in the description. You can see how he built these workbenches. Yes, you can see how he built those workbenches, definitely subscribe. But one major thing that I've been meaning to show you guys is this. It's my Bend Pack two post lift, and we already have a car up there that is my bentley and it's waiting to get its engine swap now i already have the engine you guys have seen it in a previous video but i wanted to give you guys a view underneath the car because it's the first time i've actually been underneath it and uh figured this should be a fun experience for us all now this has been in russia for quite a long time and you can tell because there's rust on all the uh kind of exposed metal components it's not too bad this is basically what a northern car would look like except for the fact that uh, it doesn't have any rust on the major body components. This seems to be rust proof quite well. It's just these bolts have a little bit of surface rust on them. Nothing too bad. But if we just follow this down, we have the exhausts, everything is stock, and uh, the bolts don't seem to be that bad either. They look like they could be taken off with uh, a regular set of tools and some PB blaster. But if you take a look up here, you'll see a pretty bad leak coming from the transmission area. It's already leaked onto the floor. So that leak is going to have to be taken care of. It's probably Probably uh, oil pan gasket or something like that. That's not really a big deal. The big deal is going to be this lump right here. This is the engine and uh, that has to come out through the bottom. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. I think I have to take out the subframe right here. So there's one bolt right here and then there's another bolt up there. I don't really know how that's going to come apart, but it's going to come apart because I have a new engine. It's over there somewhere and uh, this is going to come down. The two post lift is going to do its job and then I'm going to put the new engine in. It's going to come right back up and then this thing should be good to go. Now, you guys have seen that car over there. And this is a little bit weird because I'm recording this before doing the reveal for that car. So the timeline is a little bit, a little bit skewed. But this is my 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago. And 
This thing is one of my favorite cars in the world. And not only is it my favorite car, it's uh, been in the Fast and Furious, well, the last Fast and Furious, Fate of the Furious. This was the movie car from that movie. And it needs so much work. Now I will be doing a video on everything wrong with this car. You can see that there's a bit wrong with it right now. It does have a roll cage. It does have a bunch of extra parts and it does have a missing seat right there because I've taken out some of the components just to see what I'm working with. And right now, everything does kind of work. Everything works as far as the stock components, but when you look at stuff like this with uh, wood holding up the window, that's something that has to be uh, dealt with. Also, I can't take out the key from the ignition, so uh, that's gonna have to be dealt with. But I'm gonna be stripping this entire car down. We're gonna be redoing the interior. We're gonna be redoing the paint, the wheels, the tires, all that stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a full restoration, as well as this bumper. That bumper is not great, but it's uh it's a project and it's my most ambitious most expensive and possibly most awesome project to date so i hope you guys subscribe and uh, watch more videos on this because uh, i'm super excited about this this is more ambitious than your ferrari really so robert just said is that more ambitious than a ferrari i think it is more ambitious than a ferrari because it's a movie car and it's it I feel like to restore a Lamborghini versus just, okay, maybe that's more ambitious. <laughs> it's been on fire. You have to put a roof on it and some other stuff. Turbos over. Okay, all right. So, all right. So Robert might have a point. Uh, this might actually be my most ambitious project. And uh, it seems like somebody has put aging wheels on this. I don't know who did that. Probably okay. Either. Yeah, so uh, this is my most ambitious project. Uh, this has been on fire. This used to be Tyler Hoover's car and the engine is not in there. It's right there. So uh, I actually did buy a sandblasting cabinet and I'm gonna be taking the engine apart. We're gonna be sandblasting everything and restoring it because I think this engine is still good. And we're gonna find out if the engine is still good in a coming up episode. But uh, right now I'm looking for a hard top version of this, a hard top parts car because uh, all this all this burn stuff has to go. I'm gonna take it off at the spot welds and then graft on a hard top and then graft it on right here using some welding techniques. It's not really all that hard. The bodies are the same after all. So this is not that ambitious if I'm completely honest because it's just a strip down and then replace everything that looks burnt. So the sound of a man losing touch with reality. That, okay, I've lost touch with reality for quite some time. This is, this is not the first time I have bouts with reality. This is gonna get done um, as soon as I can. It's, uh, it really is a uh, labor of love. It's gonna be a lot of effort and uh, it's gonna cost a lot of money as well. So uh, I hope you guys like this project, but don't expect really fast updates because I mean, just take a look at it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be hard to do. But if we, <laughs> if we go around here, you'll see the 300ZX. You'll see this on the Wrench Every Day channel, my second channel with my friend Andrew Howell. And this is my 300ZX with a uh, V8 swap, a VH45. So we're actually starting this and I got a new wiring harness, which is right there. We have uh, a bunch of interior components and all that stuff. Uh, so this should be good to go as far as starting and uh, running. And then all we have to do is probably put on a wide body kit. I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do with it, but uh, I want this to be like a V8 muscle car, like a Japanese muscle car. But moving on from that is the Z4, the BMW Z4 that I did with Chris from BS for Build. And uh, this was a four day build. I will link that in the video description if you guys haven't seen it, but uh, I really, really like the color on this. This is Hockenheim Silver Metallic and uh, it has no clear coat. It is a matte and up close, it actually does not look too bad. Uh, it was a rush job, but I think if we took a little bit more time, it'd look a little bit better, especially with the panel gaps. But this car was triple salvage. This had three salvage titles throughout its life. So that's why some of the panels don't exactly line up. Chris is uh, actually getting a car carrier to get this car out of here. So um, this is gonna be leaving. It's not my car and uh, you're not gonna see this on my channel, but you will see it on Chris's channel. I think he wants to do an engine swap on this. So uh, stay tuned for that on his channel. But uh, this Supra is another thing that's kind of 
uh, been slow going because I'm looking to work with somebody to basically do this entire swap in like three days. Uh, one of my friends, Jared Pink, he uh, runs a company called Speed for Sale and he knows these Supras in and out. And I'd love to fly him out so we can basically tag team this car uh, over a long weekend, over like a three or four day weekend. And then we can just have this running, have a standalone, have a single turbo, have it making a lot of power in not too much time. And I also have to get some uh, some tires. But they should be good to go after that. It actually does run and drive. And uh, I am very excited to get this uh, going. But I think after this, after I get it painted, and after I get it looking on point with all its carbon fiber features, I'm going to sell it because uh, these things are going up in value. And honestly, I kind of need the money for things like that. But if we go past it and look at this, my daily driver, uh, you'll see that it is still on its, uh, its ramps there and the fact that it's not moving and it hasn't moved in a few months. And the reason why is because I am a dummy. I did some maintenance work on this. I did a conductor plate and I did the uh, transmission filter because it was leaking a little bit. Uh, the gasket around the transmission, that was leaking. So I replaced that and then I put everything back together. I put it into drive and it didn't move. So what I did uh, apparently was I broke a little piece and this is a spare conductor plate that I bought. Uh, I broke this, this is a plastic piece, and this tells the uh, transmission whether it's in drive or park. And instead of it being right here where it's uh, clearly going in and out, I think I left it like this to the side and it just kind of broke and um, yeah, now I have to just replace this, well, not this entire thing, but I have to take this entire thing out of that and then replace it with this. So as soon as I do that, that's gonna be on the road and I also have to do some uh, motor mounts because the motor mounts are completely shot in this car. So I know I've been saying stay tuned a lot and I hope you do because everything here, all my projects are gonna be coming up on the channel. We're gonna do everything at once. And uh, if you guys want variety, there you go. And. This thing is on the lift because it's getting its manual swap. So the manual swap SL55 is something that you guys have been messaging me about for months and it's been insane. I mean, I wanted to manual swap this ever since I got it and now I have everything to do it. So we have the four post lift, my new Ben Pack four post lift and uh, we can take out the transmission. We can put in the manual one. Apparently uh, it's not that much work to get the ECU working without a automatic transmission. Mission. I have been working with uh, a guy, another guy on YouTube, uh, Skate, I believe it's uh, Skate215. He has a uh, E55 and he's been doing a lot of really cool work there. Uh, and he's been telling me that you can actually get away with many, many things. Uh, on this car without the ECUs being there or without the transmission being there. So I'm really excited about that. So transmission is going in pretty soon and uh, you'll see first driving videos and uh, install videos and all that stuff. But just in case you guys wanted to know where this thing was at, it does run, it does drive, it's super quick and I can't wait to get it on the road and maybe even paint it. I kind of don't like the black color. I did mention that Hockenheim Silver Metallic was my new favorite for this car. So that's gonna be the end of the update for this week. Hopefully Hopefully you guys have something to look forward to. Until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like all of these with awesome workbenches and some pretty good friends, you guys need to wrench every day. What, what, what are you, you're just waving. You're just waving. What, what do you want me to do? Dance? Can you dance? No, no, I can't, I can't, I can't dance. I can pick this up and twirl it again. Okay, okay. wrench every day guys, bye.